Hello folks and welcome back to another Wise Gamer video. In this video I'm going to be covering uh, gaming tips that I use, kind of like a pattern that I use when I'm playing most of these Japanese RPG type style games, just RPG games, adventure games, even some shooting games, survival games, games of that nature. This could also work with two. So this is basically the steps I take when I'm playing a video game to kind of keep me on track, make sure I don't go off course, and then I get most of the optimal, the best items, the best things in the game. So follow this video, and I think it's going to give you a lot of great information. My first piece of advice is if you actually buy the actual disc of the game and it comes in the case with a little booklet or the little uh, manual, you may want to just peek through that, read it, and see what kind of battle systems in involved so you already know going into the game. It's got world maps. It, it should let you know things of that nature. Uh, also, what kind of commands and how the control mapping is set up for that particular game. And then the next thing I like to do is, uh, back in the day, before I had a computer and the internet, I used to buy those Bradley Gaming books for all the popular titles and it was basically a walkthrough and tips of all about that game but nowadays we have Google we have the internet and we have a lot of great free resources that we could use game facts being probably them and game winners being the two biggest giants when it comes to that kind of information and basically what I do right now I've been playing the game Tales of Symphonia so I'll just type that in. I already got it saved from the last take. Uh, let's see here. And then we'll just go here, and I am playing it for the Nintendo GameCube. It's very important that you do find the guide uh, related to the actual game system that you're using. So I'm just going to click on that. I'm going to go to a nice size guide here. One that has everything about the game, not just about the dungeons, not just about the boss fights. If you want to get those guides later, that's great too. Then I simply come here, I'm going to scroll down a little bit, check out the contents, make sure it has all the stuff that I'm looking for. And it, it looks like it's got everything. It's got a huge index. And I'm going to scroll down a little more, and another great indication of how uh, how much content uh, a guide like this has is the scroll bar is going to be really long. It's, it's, it's going to take quite a bit of time to actually go through it all. So if we go down a little bit and we see that it has a lot of information, the next thing I'm going to do is now select all and I'm going to copy it. Once I do that, we are now going to open up and make a new I like using a text document. It's very simplified. You don't need uh, a fancy Office program to uh, Notepad comes uh, default in any Microsoft operating system. And then I'm basically going to paste it and then save it. I'm not going to save mine because I already have one. So I'm just going to uh, click this, don't save, and I'm just going to delete this now. Now let's see. Now next, here is the guide that I've been using already. I'm going to click on that. Okay. Now, what do I use guides for? Well, I think you guys know most of this too, because I'm sure you guys use guides too. But the main reason why I actually use a guide is to save it. Is to actually save what I've done last in the game so I can remember it. Because a lot of times I'll go days without playing the game. You know, you, you're too busy with work or whatnot, and you can't play the game all the time. So sometimes you're going to forget what you last did and what you got to do next. Because these games are so vast, and they got so many different things going on. If you could remember all this stuff by taking a week off, my hat's off for you. <laughs> you know, but you're probably a lot younger than I am if you can. So, but anyways, um, what I do is... Um, I use it to actually save what I got to do next. 
Now, but that's not all I use it for. I do use it for game and information. You know, a lot of times these vast games leave you hanging without telling you really what's the best option you should do next. It's basically, yeah, it's basically going to let you know main storyline what you should do next. But the guide might say what you should do before taking on this boss is maybe go to this other town again that you've already been to. And now this person's going to have this weapon available for you. That nothing else in the game's really going to let you know about that. Because it, it's virtually impossible to remember every conversation you had with thousands of people within a game. So you're going to forget that stuff. So a guide lets you know usually if it's a good written guide. They're going to kind of give you the steps of what to do before taking on that boss fight. And, and what open up and what's available again. So that's another great thing about guides. Another thing I love about guides is I hate puzzles in the games that I play. If I was into puzzles, I would be playing Tetris, not Final Fantasies. Uh, so I'm not, I don't care about puzzles in the game. I don't, I don't need them. So a lot of times I'm good at figuring them out, but I'd rather not. I just want to get through that fight. I want to explore that dungeon and I want to progress through my game without some stupid puzzle holding me up. So a lot of times I'll just go to a guide and just see what, the, see what they say to do. You know, place this block here, do this, do that, and you're done. And that's it. As we know, guides have other great features too. Now if you're using a book, you could also even write on the page a little notes. This is the last place I, I saved it at. This is what I have to do next. But I like using this method the best now because we all have the internet nowadays. We all have computers. Back in the 90s, we didn't, so we had to use the Bradley books to kind of do what these guides do now. So that's basically what I do to get started with a brand new game. Well, let's see here. As I mentioned, if I go to edit, find, and type in save. I always do this whenever I use a guide and I'm playing a game. I'm going to do that. And it's going to just let me know exactly the last place I save the game and what I have to do next. So this is fantastic for when you forget. So uh, now sometimes you may have situations where you're doing two separate things at almost the same time. You're doing the main storyline, but you also, you went back, you had to do a side quest. You found out about a side quest and you want to go and do that first. You, all you got to do is say if this was a side quest, I just go here, saved. I always do my parentheses, but that's up to you. And I'll I'll just put down side quest or something like that. Make a little note on the side. So you know, and I always make sure too that any previous last saves, once I make a new one in the actual notepad, that I delete all the other ones. So it takes me right to this one. Because usually in a guide, you're not going to get something that says saved. If it does, you're going to know that it's, that it's different from your save if you put something like the parentheses around it. Okay, so that's, that I find is a great trick when it comes to using guides and saving your guide of what you have to do next in, in your video game. Okay, next we're going to go over the game a little bit. Now, in, in this case, I am using Tales of Symphonia. And uh, let's see here. And again, I don't know if I mentioned this already because I, I made a couple of takes of this video. So sometimes I may be repeating myself because of that. But you always want to make sure that whatever guides you get and things of that nature, that it matches up to the game and the game and system that you're using to play that game. So f for this game, I'm using the Nintendo GameCube but it's also available for other systems too so you want to match it with that because the storyline might be just a little bit different so keep that in mind now the next thing I like to do is um, I'm in the game now and we're gonna go outside and I like to see like what kind of maps I have I I don't like playing too many games that don't provide maps now I'm not going to stop playing a game if it's a fantastic game with all the other elements that I like in games if it doesn't have a map, but most of them do. And in that case, then I'll just go to 
Google and I'll Google the name of that game and put in world maps or something like that and see if it's got images of maps that's going to show me locations that I need to find. So this game does have a pretty good map. Different variations of the map depending on what, what buttons you push or whatnot. Now if I go to items here it's even going to um, in this particular game, again your game may be totally different it's going to let me know where I am and where these locations are by these crosshairs. But as I mentioned, each map is going to be different in each game that you actually play. So maps to me is a major, major advantage in any game. It gives you an idea where you have to go if you've got to go back to a place. And I love the dungeon ones where they're like gray and then as you explore them, and you've been to that area it opens up it turns white or something so you know where you've been and where you haven't been yet and that's I love those kind of maps right there so um, so maps to me is like a major thing in a game. and again if the maps really mean that much to you also you could always check the guides first watch YouTube videos or Google a game guide and see if it mentions anything about maps in the game before you go out and buy it so that's something you could always keep in mind too. Always, always research a game heavily. Yeah, heavily. <laughs> really, really heavy before I actually go out and get it. I want to make sure, even if it's a free game for me, I just don't want to spend my time in playing that game if it's a game that I'm not going to enjoy. So thank God for YouTube and videos. We could we could see a real up up to, you know. Um, realistic look of somebody actually playing it with those videos so I always I always research a couple of videos of a game uh, entitled that I'm planning on getting next I am a stickler when it comes to searching games I I search I search everything and uh, push the uh, search button whatever it is the accept button whatnot I used to search every little thing in every game I played, but I'm noticing as later titles came out, they don't have as many hidden surprises as the early games once had. Like Breath of Fires, like remember the first Breath of Fire 1, the Breath of Fire 2, you could find stuff virtually anywhere. It could be in, in uh, drawers, it could be in, in, in chests, it could be in vases, or whatnot. This particular game that I'm playing right now, Tales of Symphonia, it, it's mainly just in treasure boxes. So if you don't see a treasure box, odds are um, you don't have to check everything, like barrels and stuff. But sometimes there may be something there. You don't really know. So to me, checking everything in a game is, is huge. And uh, also talking to everybody. All the people you come across, you want to talk to everybody in a game because they may kick in something that that you can use they may even be somebody who can join your party and if you didn't talk to that person you're never going to know about that so those are things too that I always like to point out that I find that's very very important for a great uh, gaming experience I actually played a game once I forgot the name of the title and I don't mean to sound gross here but it was uh, it was a game where you could actually swim and there was a certain dolphin that you spoke to and if you spoke to that dolphin he puked up a key and there was nothing in the game that really told you that and the key actually was used for a special treasure box in the game that had this like really killer item it was like a weapon or something like that and I wouldn't have known about it unless if I didn't read about it because nothing in the game really really gave you that clue towards that so that's why you gotta check everything in these games as we know the only time I won't really go crazy checking out like a dungeon is if I'm deep in a dungeon and my guys are getting like really low on HP uh, in this game it's TP points or, or, or mana points and I'm running really uh, considerably low on items I will not jeopardize losing my group to searching. So that's the only time I'll try to get to the exit or do what I have to do and get out of that dungeon. And then once I get back to town and I replenish, I 
I stock up on items and stuff and I'm a little bit stronger now then I'll go back to that cave or dungeon and then search all the nooks and crannies and see what I what I missed the last time so that's the only time I will not go too crazy searching out a place I know this is kinda late into the video um, because we already discussed the mapping in games but I do want to point out that I forgot to mention earlier sometimes certain maps may not be available at the start of the game you either have to buy them or you gotta do certain quests or missions and it's gonna unlock and somebody may give you a map later on for a certain area or whatnot so I wanted to make sure that I put that in there before we continue with the video okay now we are back outside here and what I want to go over next is more like getting ready to do dungeons and whatnot okay actually fights in the game but I'm not going to tell you guys how to fight and all that you guys already know all that stuff and I got other videos about that but basically what I do to keep up with my tunes and make sure they're up to par I always like to grind I always like to make sure that I'm always a level or two levels above what I should be because it just makes the game that much more simplified you're not dying all the time and it's also giving you more money in the game you know and it's giving you more items it could give you another member in the game it could give you anything in the game so grinding to me and going back and double checking with certain people that's really important in the game is something I find that you should always do so you know grinding in the game as we know is and I'll always do it at a spot that has both um, a rest and a save if it doesn't have those those two elements I'm, I won't use that place as a grinding spot I'll just move on until I come out to the next place that does alright so this here way I'm not always using up all my items because like in this game right here I only have a certain amount of items that I could carry I can only carry up to 20 items now in some games like Final Fantasies and I think Chrono Trigger and those kind of games you could hold up to a hundred so in those games I'm not as worried about uh, going through my items as much now another great piece of advice too when it comes to this is dependent again on the actual game is the members in your in your in your team this is my main healer uh, rain and she uh, in this particular game right here again I know that this doesn't apply to all video games but she could even be outside of the active group but she's still with me and I could still use her wait a minute, I keep doing that I could still use her to use a technique to heal somebody if I want to conserve my items so if I'm out grinding in an area like this I usually try to stay nearby to the end so in case if they do start getting low I don't have to resort to items but in the case like this if somebody gets low I could just go to tech go to uh, rain and use her uh, use her heals and heal everybody back up as we know with just a short nap at an end she's gonna get all that back and then we still have our items for where we need them deep inside of a cave where you don't have the option of using an inn and all that that's why I find that towns and villages and stuff that has everything is the best time to uh, to sit there and level up a uh, couple of hours or what what not whatever you want to do you know that's uh, totally up to you so grinding is always a win-win situation now keep in mind some games will scale with your level increase so um, the monsters are going to be the same level as you are so you never really go above them there's only a handful of games that I played that's actually like that most do not but just keep that in mind because you may play a game where the scaling is the same between your level and theirs but you're still going to have that advantage because you're getting everything else you're still making more gold or money in the game and things of that nature so to me leveling up and, and uh, grinding is always a great thing to do then of course resting up getting back all your uh, all your goodies your, your HP points your mana 
all that good stuff and I cannot this is the biggest piece of advice I can I cannot stress this is saving saving this game saving any game is so important because we know so many different things can happen you could lose your power you could lose your internet you could die and now you just spent two hours from the last save now you're gonna go back and get everything over again a lot of times you may come across a treasure and then once you die you forget that you gotta go back to that hallway or whatever and get that treasure again because you haven't saved it since so that's why to me saves in a game is crucial then of course keeping up with your party members making sure that they have the best abilities skills keeping up with with their gear in uh, keeping up with the uh, having a good balanced group you know making sure that there's always a healer in your group if you have that option uh, a magic caster uh, a DPSer a melee which is a sword user or whatnot you know always having that nice mix of a perfect group is going to give you that best game and experience and make it sure that they're always fully geared and up the pie you don't want to neglect too many hours of this because it can make a huge difference so um, here we are next we're going to discuss what I use as my method when I'm combing a brand new dungeon cave or you know any place where there's a lot of fights you, you're going to be facing a boss fight soon or whatnot this is this is usually what I do and uh, in this game they do have save spots in in certain dungeons which is nice so I can save my game but I can't rest this these saves in this game it doesn't give me the option to rest. If I'm, if I'm low or whatnot, you just use the healer if you want, or you can start going into some of your items if, if you really need to. Now, as far as treasures go, and, and combing the area and searching every nook and cranny, which I'm a huge avid of, I tend to always go left first. I always found that when I started playing games, most of the short paths with a treasure box at the end and nothing else is usually to the left or the west of any dungeon that you're in but that's not always the same it depends on the actual game sometimes they may be all to the right sometimes they may be mixed both left and right so don't hold me at this but I just found from my experience I would say 60 to 70 percent of the games I've played I usually go to the left first get rid of you know um, so that I know now that all those areas are all checked out and clean. Now I've already done this area. So then I would go back if you have a save option and then once you picked up a few treasures you're gonna save it, mark it in your notes and you're good to go. Now you know you don't have to worry about those patents again. So that's always a big plus. It makes you feel the game. It lets you know that this is what the game's all about. I know that I'm all set here and I just gotta go on with the main path you're gonna find that most games do have a patent and once you figure out the patent of what that game uses most of the dead ends with the treasure boxes is to the left or most of the dead ends with the treasure boxes are to the right once you pick up that patent it's usually the same for most of the dungeons in that game so as we know and I'm sure most of you guys know all this stuff because we've all been playing games for years but I just feel that I have like these five or six patents that I stick to in every game and it's always served me correctly and made it where I, 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 I don't feel confused and I kinda treat almost every game almost the same once I find out what the structure and the patent is for that particular game because you're gonna find that most of them have a patent that that works like that now if I go this way all right, I can't go that way. Okay, but anyways, that to me is a big thing. And let's see here. Let's see. Is there anything else that I left out? Because I think we're almost at the end of this video. And again, always take the main cut scenes and listen and pay attention because this is the main storyline. So that's going to be your main focus for the actual whole game as a whole. And uh, let's see here. Oop, there's a fight. So I'm just going to... Always make sure, too, 
that you switch out your members every now and then. Like I know sometimes it, it's tough too because we'll get favorites, but sometimes that person may have to be have to come with you in a certain dungeon, and if you've been ne neglecting them and not leveling them up, then you're going to be hurt. So in this game. In some games like this, I got it kind of made when it comes to this because they all gain experience. They're all, everybody's still kind of with me in the group, but only four are actually active as far as the fighting goes. But these people are still going to get experience levels just as much as these guys. But some games doesn't have that feature. You have to actually take them in the actual active fighting group to get their levels up. Dragon Quest is a great example because I played that just not too long ago and some of the Dragon Quests they're in a wagon or you put them in farms or whatever they're called and you actually have to go and get them put them in the group switch them out with somebody else to have their experience levels go up another thing I want to mention too in some games is that it's very important that you actually switch the person in the front so in this game in this particular game right here if I just go to like say this person I press the accept button the one with the red flag in this in this game is now going to be the person in the front of my team and in some games like I think it was Chrono Trigger or Chrono Cross or both of them is a good example of this the person you put in the front and then you speak to the person you know not the innkeeper, but sometimes it can affect the innkeeper. But if if you actually talk to a, a person, that person in the front now may uh, kick in a different dialogue than the person that you uh, always have in the front. They may say something different and kick in something totally different because they want to speak to that particular person. In this game so far, I don't find that being so important, so I haven't been doing that as much. But you want to keep in mind that in some games you do want to switch around who your leader is in that group. Let you guys know that no, I do not play with a guide up at all times. I like figuring out things. That's part of playing a video game. But again, there's no fun in wasting three hours trying to figure out where you have to go next. Or what your best option is to do next. So that's what I mainly use the guides for, plus saving what I what I did last so I could always remember what I have to do next. Uh, you know, and if things get really tricky and the guide's not good enough, YouTube is your best friend when it comes to that. If 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 there's somebody that made a video covering that part that, that you're stuck on, because as we know, it's visual and there's nothing better than that. You could actually see what the person's doing. You just follow that and you're good to go. So, um, but I'm sure I don't have to educate you guys when it comes to a lot of this stuff. But again, this is just the way I do it. And uh, you wouldn't be here watching my video, Wise Gamer, if you didn't already know about uh, watching uh, YouTube videos for this kind of information. So until then, guys, thanks again for stopping by. Feel free to sub up, comment below. And again, this is Wise Gamer, and you have a great day. We'll catch you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.